My name is Dilal Al Abdul Razag, and I'm a PhD candidate at the Fisheries Centre at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. Aspiring to be a marine biologist was always a natural progression for me. Growing up in Kuwait, it's hard not to be inspired by the ocean. We live so close to the coast, and its rich ecosystems have sustained our culture for thousands of years. As a young girl, I would always accompany my father on fishing trips, and until this day, those remain my favorite memories of my childhood. After the Gulf War in 1991, I witnessed firsthand the devastating effects people could have on marine ecosystems, and I was deeply saddened by what I saw. I got a glimpse into what it would be like for us to completely lose our oceans and it inspired me to get active. But it wasn't until I was 16 and started interning at the Kuwait Scientific Center Aquarium where I realized I could actually turn my love of marine life into a career. That summer, I learned to dive and I was instantly hooked. I live for that moment when I'm underwater, when I can escape my normal life to become a privileged observer of a secret seascape. It's humbling to know that you are one of the few people who can come so close to the stunning beauty of being underwater. Today my PhD research examines the historical ecology of the Arabian Gulf. Because marine ecology is a young science, there are actually very few studies that are older than a couple decades, and therefore we have no idea of what a healthy ecosystem looks like, as in one that hasn't already been severely altered by humans. My hope is that by understanding how past ecosystems functioned and how they differ from today, we can set more appropriate management targets for the recovery and conservation of coastal ecosystems. In the Gulf, overfishing is one of our biggest challenges. Unlike other human-induced impacts like pollution or climate change, overfishing is 100% deliberate. The majority of our fish species are overexploited. What this means is that we are removing marine life at a much faster rate than what can be replaced naturally. Shrimp fishing in particular is very destructive. Huge trawl nets are dragged across the ocean floor, destroying the complex bottom structure composed of corals and sponges. And when we trawl, we don't just target shrimp, we take everything with it. In Kuwait, like in many places around the world, one kilogram of shrimp requires 15 kilograms of bycatch. Bycatch are those other species that we catch when we are targeting a selected species. 98% of this bycatch is then thrown back overboard. Every year, Kuwait actually catches more fish through bycatch than it does by its targeted fisheries, killing and wasting hundreds of thousands of fish. The good news is that these effects are reversible. What we need is much stronger fishing regulations and enforcement, and we need to set aside marine protected areas, that is, areas of the sea that are completely closed off to fishing so that those species have a chance to reproduce and replenish their population. It is my hope that my doctoral research will lay the scientific foundations needed to establish these conservation measures and to ensure the sustainable management of the Gulf's marine resources well into the future. The oceans are able to take care of themselves. It's just a matter of lessening our impact on them.